So hello everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Derek Keats and uh, I'm an old geek who likes to uh, tinker around with technology. So I've been playing around with uh, OBS Studio and, and doing some live streaming and, and things like that. So I thought I'd share with you uh, some of my experiences um, as I put together this little video called Creating a Killer OBS Installation on Ubuntu Linux uh, for Teaching and Streaming into Video Conferences. Now this is actually a follow-up from uh, a live stream I did last week Wednesday, which you can find on uh, the Kenga Solutions YouTube channel. And uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just introduce you to making an OBS install on, on Linux and getting it up and running with the concept of a virtual webcam. So basically what it is, is OBS can output instead of a stream uh, to a streaming server, uh, it will output its content or its, uh, its uh, whatever it is that you're presenting into a virtual webcam. And that virtual webcam can then be used in other applications such as Zoom or Skype or any of the other uh, um, you know, uh, video conferencing applications that you can think of, Jitsi and others. So this is basically what we're going to do now. We're going to start with a live installation of Ubuntu Linux um, that I'm going to install into a virtual machine on this version, of, on this Ubuntu installation that I'm using. Now, um, so that has already been done. The Linux is already installed. What we're going to do is we're going to now install um, OBS onto that uh, Linux uh, virtual machine. So let's just get started. Over on this screen here, I have, um, right here, I have uh, the Oracle um, Virtualization Manager, and in it, you can see I've got an instance of Ubuntu uh, 2004, which is the one that will be released in, in about 10 days' time. Um, it's not yet released, but I've been tinkering around with it, and it's as good a install as any to play with. Whether you're using 1910 or 1804 or whatever it is you're using, the commands that I'm going to show you will be exactly the same. So let, and then adjacent to that, you can see I've got a little text uh, window, which I'm going to just take out of the way momentarily, uh, where I've got all of the commands that we're going to run uh, in the text box. So I don't, in the, in the, um, in this little text editor, so I don't have to remember them or type them, which is a bit slow. Okay, so let's just start Ubuntu uh, 2004, uh, which as I said is running in a virtual machine as you can see here. So basically we're running Ubuntu inside of Ubuntu. Um, this allows me to reset this install and use it to, to teach things uh, such as how to create a new install of OBS. So bear with me while I log in there. Okay, so here we have uh, basically an Ubuntu desktop. Uh, so this, this uh, window here that I'm moving around is the virtual instance and the screen behind it here is my uh, Ubuntu uh, um, 1910 version that I'm using. So we're running Ubuntu inside of Ubuntu. Okay, so let's open a, a terminal window here and uh, Let's make this uh, full screen so you can see it a little bit better. And then we will just zoom in the terminal a little bit, maybe maybe tiny a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing here. So the first thing that we're going to do is just uh, start by adding the uh, repository for <clears throat> OBS Studio so that we can do the install from the command line. You can, of course, do these installs from um, uh, from the GUI, as I've said. Um, but I prefer to use the terminal because it's much quicker to work with, work with. Um, and it's easier to automate the process. So I can put all these commands in a script, for example. So now we're going to update. Um, we've updated the, the repository. We're going to now install OBS Studio and FFmpeg. So at the end of this process, we will have OBS Studio installed. So if I go here, I can see that I've now got OBS Studio there on. 
Okay, let me get out of the way here so that you can actually see this a little bit bigger. Um, so now uh, what we have to do is we need to download a program called uh, V4L2 Sync. <clears throat> so we're going to do that um, by downloading it into the downloads directory, uh, which is the standard place where you download things. So we're going to use wget together with a URL. Uh, which basically is the same as uh, opening it in a web browser, but it uses wget, which just downloads the file and saves it. So we're going to download obs-v4l2sync.deb. Okay, so let's do that. Um, there you go. We've got it. Uh, if we ls, which is the listing of the files in the directory of downloads, and you can see there it is, obs-v4l2sync.deb. Um, uh, Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the dpkg command, um, dpkg-i, with the file name, we'll install it. So that's it. We've installed um, the, uh, the, the v4l2 sync uh, uh, tool into OBS. And if we open OBS now, Um, and you'll see that there's some uh, little scenes that I've created here. Unfortunately, we can't use uh, the webcam because the webcam is in use on, on the host system, and I can't use it here. So let's ignore all of this, and let's just look at tools. You can see there's V4L2 Sync. That is the, um, that is the tool that actually allows OBS to stream out to a virtual webcam okay so now let's just uh, minimize OBS for a minute and do a little bit of uh, other magic that we have to do so so the other thing we need to do is we need to install the kernel module v4l2 loopback that um, allows the video to be output to a loopback device which behaves in a way like it was another webcam on your system so we're just going to install v2 uh, v4l2 loopback um, there's a whole bunch of supporting stuff including kernel drivers and things that it will install so it'll take a couple minutes uh, there we go done okay so now we're going to just uh, issue a command to remove it from the kernel in case it's already loaded so we can see what uh, other video sources we have on our system. Okay, so it wasn't loaded as it shouldn't be. So if we do um, ls uh, div video on Linux, everything is a folder or a file. So videos are, uh, video sources are just files. So you can see we have no video sources at the moment, which makes sense because there are no, you know, this is a virtual machine and there are no uh, webcams plugged into it. Um, if I wanted to, I could turn on uh, a virtual machine and uh, I mean, I could turn on the webcam within the virtual machine and it would be available, but then I'd have to turn it off in um, in the OBS session that I'm using to do this recording. So that wouldn't work very well. So what we're going to do now is we're basically going to turn on this loopback by probing it into the, mod into the uh, kernel. So now it's turned on. So if I go to OBS and I go Tools, uh, V4L2 Sync, you can see there it's uh, it's showing V4, which I'm not uh, a video. Sorry, it's it's showing uh, video zero, which makes sense because if we go back here and we now redo this command ls uh, video asterisk, you can see that we now have a video uh, stream there, a video uh, a webcam or a video source there, which is video zero. So that's now our virtual webcam. So when we go into uh, OBS Studio, you can see that it is available there under, v uh, um, under uh, V4L2 Sync. Okay, so now the challenge I'm gonna have here is that this doesn't work on the, on the um, virtual machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stop recording. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just going to close all this stuff and then I'll come back with another session uh, where I'm running a second instance of 
OBS on the actual native uh, host system that I'm using to do this recording. So bear with me for a second. Uh, okay, I'm back. So what I've done now is I have um, I've started another instance of OBS on my right hand screen because I've got two video monitors. The one I'm using for this to record this uh, session and the other is available for output. So that's what you're seeing here in the background now. Uh, this whole area here, here is my uh, second, my right hand screen. So I'm just sharing that right hand screen with you. Um, and you can see that um, what I've done here is I've listed uh, the, the video devices on my system and you can see that there are three of them and the one that I just added is is video 2 remember on the virtual machine it was video 0 but because there are two video sources already on this machine um, it will be video 2 because <clears throat> it starts from 0 so 0 1 and 2 all right so now so this um, this is OBS second instance uh, you wouldn't want to see what it looks like if I just give you the first instance. Uh, it will be just a whole lot of things disappearing in uh, into the background. So uh, this helps keep us sane. So now let's start a new meeting in Zoom. And before we do the uh, before we do the video source in Zoom, we're going to go here, and you can see here is V uh, for L two sync. And we, we've got it configured to send its output to video two, so we can start. Okay, at this point now, we can close this uh, because OBS is outputting to the virtual camera. So when we go into Zoom now, we go to video sources, you can see it's configured for dummy video device, um, which is the default name for the loopback. And when I go to start video, you can see that in Zoom, I now have um, the output from OBS um, and, uh, and there it is at the at normal size or in a window however you want to see it so um, you know this is a very good way to be able to take something like OBS use it to control and manage the content that you're going to be outputting and at the same time um, you know, it gives you uh, the ability to use the sort of sources of uh, information sharing that your colleagues are using. Things like Zoom, things like Skype, things like Jitsi, things like Microsoft Teams, uh, etc. There's lots of them. Basically, anything that can use a webcam can be used as an output source for OBS. And it gives you all the power uh, to be able to do stuff um, you know, using video and using pretty much any source um, that you wouldn't be able to do using any other means. Yes, you can share your desktop, uh, but your desktop by itself is not that useful. Uh, yes, you can run presentations and, and you can show things in a web browser and all of that, but you can't queue things up and, and manage them and manipulate them in a way that you can do with a proper streaming so, uh, so, uh, uh, application like OBS. So that's basically uh, the gist of it. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. And of course, if you have enjoyed it or you want to see more of, uh, of this kind of video, if you want to see more things about free and open source software, about live streaming, about how to create things on the Linux platform or using free and open source software tools on other platforms such as Windows or Mac, um, Drop me a, a line, leave a comment, and of course, please like and subscribe. The more likes and subscribes I get, the more of these things I will do. Simple. Thank you. Bye for now.